Hello, thank you for coming to this presentation. This talk is entitled Sequential Gallery for Interactive Visual Design Optimization. And I'm Yuki Koyama from AIST. And this work was conducted with Issei Sato from the University of Tokyo and Masataka Goto from AIST. Let me begin with the quick overview. So parametric visual design is almost everywhere in graphics, and we can find various sliders in content creation tools to adjust how the design looks. For example, in photo color enhancement software, such as Photoshop, uh, we have many sliders like exposure, contrast, saturation, and so on. And in this parameter tweaking, the user needs to perform many trials and errors. But since this is a high dimensional search task, it can be tedious and time consuming for end users, especially when they don't have domain knowledge. So here is our motivation. So what computational support is possible here? But we have a challenge. Since parameters need to be determined based on the user's preference, it is difficult to fully automate this parameter tweaking process. In this work, uh, we take a user in the loop approach and propose a system called sequential gallery. Our target is a set of n design parameters or sliders in visual design. And we want to find an optimal parameter set that provides the best look. Sequential gallery is an interactive optimization system that can be used for this problem. So let me explain. So first, the system shows an options to the user using a grid interface like this one, and then asks the user to choose the best option in this grid uh, based on the user's preference. Then the system updates the options shown in the grid view, and again asks the user to choose the best one from the grid. This process is iteratively performed several times. And finally, the user can obtain the optimal parameter set. So let me show a demo video. So in this demo, uh, this photograph will be enhanced by adjusting 12 different parameters. And this is the user interface of the system. The task for the user is to choose the best option from the grid by clicking it. And as you see, the system offers a zooming functionality. That is, once the user clicks one of the options, the system zooms so that the user can pick up more nuanced option. And after several iterations, the user can get, uh, uh, the user can obtain the optimal parameter set that provides the best enhancement for the user. In this work, uh, we offer two contributions. The first one is the novel algorithm called sequential plane search. This is a variant of preferential Bayesian optimization or PBO and can find optimal solutions with only a small number of iterations. And the second one is the interactive system called sequential gallery. So it uses the proposed algorithm in combination with a grid interface. And this system enables the user to effectively perform the optimization. Now let me describe the target problem from a more mathematical viewpoint. Suppose that uh, we have n sliders to adjust. Let the large x be the n-dimensional search space, and the small bold x be an n-dimensional vector that represent the parameter values. We assume that we can define a function g, uh, which is a perceptual preference function, and returns a goodness value for a given parameter set. So we call this function a goodness function. So the goal is to solve an n-dimensional optimization problem 
to find the maximizer of the of this goodness function. When interacting with a goodness function, we need a special care about how to get feedback from the user or how to query to the goodness function. The most important point is that the user cannot directly answer the function value reliably. Since even the user does not know the landscape of the goodness function. So we should not rely on absolute assessment. This is why standard optimization techniques are not suitable for this situation. Instead, we can use relative assessment. That is, the user can stably answer which option is better among two or possibly more options. Uh, for example, if there are options A and B and the user chooses A, then uh, we can obtain the relative information that uh, GXA is larger than GXB. And we call this type of data as preferential feedback. And in this work, we use the preferential Bayesian optimization uh, because it can learn using preferential feedback data instead of direct function values. Now I'd like to introduce the preferential Bayesian optimization. So before explaining preferential Bayesian optimization, uh, let me quickly introduce the standard Bayesian optimization or BO. So BO is a global black box optimization algorithm. The, the important property is that it can find optimal solutions with only a small number of function evaluations. This makes it useful to handle expensive to evaluate objective functions. For example, uh, it is used for hyperparameter tuning for deep learning models. And PBO is an extension of BO which lands with relative assessment or preferential feedback data rather than absolute assessment. Similar to BO, PBO is also able to find optimal solutions with only a small number of preferential feedback iterations. This property is important for us because human is expensive to query. The first PBO algorithm was introduced by Brochu et al. The query in their algorithm is pairwise comparison. That is, given two points in the search space, the user is asked to choose the better one from these two points. More recently, Koyama et al. introduced another PBO algorithm named sequential line search which is based on line search queries. The user is asked to find the best point within a one-dimensional subspace. Since it is one-dimensional, uh, this task can be performed using a slider interface. And this query form makes the number of necessary iterations drastically smaller than the first work. In our work, uh, we further extend the previous algorithms so that it uses plain search or 2D search queries. That is, we ask the user to find the best point uh, within a two-dimensional subspace. This can make the number of necessary iterations even smaller than the previous work. Also, uh, this 2D query is nicely compatible with grid interfaces uh, which produces additional benefits. The technical challenge is how to determine the 2D subspace for each iteration, and we will explain it later. Now let me explain the workflow of this system. Suppose that this is the, the 2D subspace that the algorithm determines. Then the system asks users to select the best one from the grid, and based on this preferential feedback data, the, the algorithm determines the next search plane. Then again, the system asks the user to select the best one from the grid. And using all the accumulated preferential data, 
uh, the algorithm determines the next search plane. And like this way, the system proceeds the iteration. For the interface to perform 2D search subtasks, uh, we use a zoomable grid interface. At the beginning of each subtask, the system maps the entire search plane to the grid view. Once the user clicks an option, uh, it zooms up the region in the plane and then updates the options in the grid view accordingly. Then the user again clicks an option and zooms up. So this is iterated several times. And finally, the user can specify the best possible option in this plane in a reasonably pre precise manner. We have some benefits of using zoomable grid interface. For example, it allows the user to easily grasp the available options in the current 2D subspace by just seeing the grid view. Also, uh, since the interaction is WYSIWYG, so the user does not need to be aware of low parameters. Okay, now I'd like to explain how we can determine the next plane in each iteration of sequential plane search. In each iteration, we want to select the most effective 2D subspace or search plane for the next query. And the effectiveness here means the degree to which it is worth observing in the next iteration to find the optimal solution. The question is how to define such effectiveness. And for this purpose, uh, we can use the concept of acquisition functions used in standard Bayesian optimization. An acquisition function can evaluate how effective a point is as the next query. So in each iteration in the standard BO, the maximizer of the acquisition function is selected as the next query point. And in this work, we extend this pointwise acquisition function so that we can evaluate how effective a search plane is as the next query. So let D be the, the accumulated preferential data so far obtained. So we write the existing pointwise acquisition function used in standard BO as a point, and this takes x as input, then evaluates its effectiveness. Then uh, we write the proposed plane-wise acquisition function as a plane, and this takes plane as input and then evaluate its effectiveness. We propose to define it as a simple surface integral of the pointwise acquisition function. In practice, this integral is approximately calculated by sampling. And using this definition, uh, now we can choose the next plane by solving this maximization problem which is easily solved by standard optimization techniques. Now I'd like to talk about the applications. So because our system does not rely on any domain-specific formulations, it can be applied to various parametric design scenarios as long as the number of parameters is reasonable, such as 10 or 20. I'd like to show a video of enhancing this photograph. So one of the benefits of this grid interface is that the user can easily understand what variation is possible in the current subspace. In color enhancement, uh, there are many possible and varied color variations, and so it is challenging to identify the best enhancement. But with our system, the, the user can easily and quickly compare uh, different color variations and pick up the most preferable uh, enhancement. And after five iterations, the user got this result. 
Next, we show another application on 3D body shape modeling using a pre-trained model. Here, the user needs to find a 10-dimensional vector that generates a desired shape. In this case, we assumed the scenario that the user wanted to create a character from a fictional novel. That is, given this text description of a character, the user repeatedly selects the more suitable body shape from the presented options. And after seven iterations, the user got this model from this text description. We evaluated our algorithm and system from two different viewpoints. First, we evaluated uh, the performance of the algorithm using synthetic test functions. The specific goals are to evaluate the efficiency of our sequential brain search compared to the previous work, and also to confirm that BO contributes to the optimization performance. In this experiment, uh, we used synthetic objective functions to simulate human responses. As the algorithms to be compared, uh, we considered the three algorithms as shown in this slide. The first two are the baselines, and the last one is our algorithm. The first baseline is called SLS, which represents sequential line search proposed in the previous work. The second baseline is called SPS random, uh, which is the sequential, sequential plane search, but the plane is randomly chosen instead of using the acquisition function or BO. And here are the results. The vertical axis represents the optimality gap in, in which lower is better. And the horizontal axis represents the iteration count. Here we use a Gaussian function as the test function. These plots indicate that ours consistently outperformed the baselines. And here are another results using a different test function. And the conclusion is the same. We also conducted an informal user study to gather feedback about the system. We asked six participants to perform photo enhancement using our system. And we don't describe the details in this talk, but the summary of the results are shown in this slide. Okay, so I'd like to talk about some discussion points. One of the most important points is the dimensionality issue. So it is known that BO is inherently not good at handling very high dimensional problems. And this is also true in PBO. In this work, uh, we assumed the target dimensionality is at most 20. And to overcome this uh, dimensionality issue, we consider that some application-specific extensions should be made. For example, if the application is about deep learning-based generative modeling, the method proposed by Chu et al. at this C graph would be a possible option to combine with our system. For other discussions, please refer to the paper for details. Uh, let me summarize this talk. So in this work, we presented Sequential Gallery, which is an interactive system for user in the loop visual design optimization. Its efficient search is enabled by Sequential Plane Search, which is a preferential Bayesian optimization algorithm, and is able to find the solution with only a minimal number of iterations. This is a list of references mentioned in this talk. So thank you for watching this video. I'll welcome any questions or comments at Seagraph. Thank you.